You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Pablo. <laughs> I knew that was, you know, you kind of just changed the delivery when, when you're going to say Pablo. <laughs> Really? Yeah, so I knew it was coming. Anyways, I uh, I guess that makes me Uraberto, and this is episode 723. Whoever we are, glad that you're out there hanging out with us. Hope 2018 is off to being the best year you've ever had. And that it stays that way through December, not just February or even March. Yeah, welcome, guys. Really excited for this show. We're going to be talking about stacking photos, shooting in AEB. Now, we've got a whole class on this on the website. If you just go to droneu.education, you can actually get this class for free in addition to the other 26 classes that are on that site. Become a member, you'll get exclusive access. But we're going to talk about why stacking images is so powerful. We're going to talk about why it's really good for getting the best photo possible. It's also done on your iPhone, but you didn't even probably know it. That's called the HDR feature. It's actually an auto stack. It can also be done on most Sony cameras as well. But as we head to CES this week, we're going to be looking at a lot of different cameras, a lot of new technology that's coming out. We're very excited about that. Hmm. But today we're going to help kind of show you why stacking is so important. Should you offer it to all of your clients? Should it be a value add proposition? That's what we're going to be talking about today. We're very excited to be doing so. Also, a big special thank you to our friends at Energen. That's E-N-E-R-G-E-N.com forward slash shop, which is who we'll be meeting at CES. We'll be talking to them about some of their new products that we're really excited about. But if you're like me and you travel and you fly to many different places and oftentimes you don't have reliable energy sources or a power outlet or an inverter with you, have no fear, Energen is here. Make sure you pick up a Drone Max battery. There's a series of batteries. There's three of them. The M10, the A40, and the P40. I use the A40 myself. And if you want to get one of those, just go to myenergen.com forward slash shop. And then use discount code DRONEU A40 for $50 off. I think that will help you out significantly. All right, Rob, let's hear the question. Hey, guys. Jason from Illinois here. Um, I'm getting into the uh, photography side of drones lately. Still pretty new to it. Um, but one of the things I've been learning about is uh, bracketing the photos. Um, it seems that this makes photography a lot easier, especially for uh, people like me who don't have a huge background in photography. Um, I'm not sure if this is something that people utilize a lot for clients. I'm just kind of curious if this is something I should be doing for every client or if this is something uh, I can utilize to upsell to a client or is that something I should be charging more for? We'd really like to hear what you guys have to say about bracketing. Thank you. To bracket or not to bracket? That is the question. <laughs> I don't know. All I'll say is that you, prior to the prior to going live, you showed me some pictures of the differences, and it's a pretty big difference, actually. Yeah. Um, in fact, I probably have some much, much better examples in, that I could show you and show everyone else as well. Um, like actually I know the perfect example, so let's check this out and I will make sure that we have, uh, these images available. Okay. For example, here's a photo. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a single photo that was not bracketed. See how dark the shadows are. I see that. And you see, but how light over here our exposure is in the, in the lights. Now, if we check out that same photo, Whoa. See, this is what happens when you bracket the image. Okay, so can you please tell our fine listeners, I mean, I know a lot of them know, but a lot of them don't, mm -hmm. what bracketing is. So when you take bracketed shots, you are normally taking, so normally you take an image and it's one image at a certain exposure and that's your image. Well, when you bracket photos, you're taking multiple images, normally in three, five, or seven shots, and that's your bracket, but you're taking those shots at different um, exposure values. So let's say that we're taking a picture at uh, f 4.5, 100 ISO, and a shutter speed of 1 over 400. Let's just use that as an example. Well, when we do a bracketed shot, and when you're using DJI Go, this is the AEB function, or auto exposure bracketing, it's actually going to take multiple pictures. So your picture at f 4.5, whatever I said, 
what it's going to do is take the exposure value minus 0.67 and then minus 1.3, whatever it is. It's going to take these different shots, so that way you have multiple exposures of the same shot. Now, it's only the exposure value that you're changing. Why is this beneficial? Well, as you guys, I'm sure, understand, most photographers understand, is that if you overexpose a picture, there is no saving the picture. If you underexpose the picture, there is saving the shadows. You can totally brighten up the shadows, but if you overexpose, there's just no data in the image to save. When we take multiple images and we stack these images together, so if we take you know, auto exposure bracketing, which is normally how I shoot all of my photos. I normally shoot them in sets of three or in sets of five. When I take these photos, I can stack them together and get the best exposure in the shadows and get the best exposure in the highlights. So I'm stacking these images together. That way I get the optimum exposure in very, like the, the very, uh, how do I say this, maximum and minimums of the photo essentially. So hmm. I'm getting really good exposure in my highlights. I'm getting really good exposure in my shadows. Why do I do this? This way I get more dynamic range in the image itself. So my pictures have that quote unquote HDR effect. HDR is essentially a stacked image. So you have three images that are stacked together to create the best image possible. This is how your iPhone works when it takes an HDR image. This is how even the HDR feature works with DJI. Personally, though, I like to edit the images myself. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, my gosh, I normally take, you know, 40 to 60 photos of a house for real estate, for example. Well, when you take, you know, AEB photos, now you're turning that into 120, 180 pictures. Mm -hmm. So how do you create an automated system to actually edit these photos, stack them together to get these great Mm. HDR looking pictures? Well, We have a whole class on that called Lightroom Automation. Now, there are a couple different ways that you can put these stacked images together. And by the way, let me take a couple steps back. I think it's really important that you take all of these photos as raw. So .dng, you're just going to have a lot more flexibility in editing the colors, in editing, um, you know, your hues, in editing your exposure, your whites, your blacks, um, your highlights, your shadows. You're just going to have a lot more flexibility. Um... Think think of it like this. If I were to take a picture behind a windshield versus if I were to take a picture outside of the window, that's kind of the difference between a RAW and a JPEG. The JPEG is just limiting you on the amount of data that's in the photo, whereas a RAW image gives us all the possible data that we could use to get the best image possible. And then when we stack those images, we really have a huge effect on what we're shooting. So we can get a lot more data out of those particular images. Now, That being said, I think it's really, really, really important to focus on how you edit these images. You can edit them in Photoshop. If you go to Photoshop, in fact, I'm going to open it here. And then if you click New, hold on one second while my Photoshop opens, you click File, then you go to Automate, and you can click Merge to HDR Pro. Now, that means that you're actually organizing the images yourself. So you know which three images are the same image. You know if they're five, if it's a three bracket, whatever you chose. Then you can edit those images together. I particularly don't like doing that. What I like to do is I will open up all of my images in Lightroom. Then when I go into Lightroom, I'll import all my images and then click and select all of my images and then right-click, go to Stacking, Auto Stack by Time. That way, it's going to create my stacks for me. It's going to stack all my images to create that one beautiful image for each particular subject that I shot. Now, once I do that, I'm going to collapse all of my stacks and then deselect all the images, select one particular image, and then merge to HDR. Now, once I do that, you can auto-tone the image. When you auto-tone the image, normally what it does is brightens up the exposure just a little bit, takes the highlights down significantly, increases the shadows just a little bit, and increases the amount of white that you have in your photo a little bit, adds a little bit of clarity and a little bit of vibrancy. Now, sometimes it works great, especially in landscape photos, but when you're doing interior shots and when you're doing some portrait stuff, it's really not good to auto-tone those images. Now, what I just mentioned sounds like a lot. This is why we have a whole class on Lightroom automation. This way, when you're taking hundreds of photos and they're stacked and you want the best photos possible, you have a way or a workflow to create these images, these super high quality images in a very short amount of time. Because here at DroneU, we want you to have a really good business and that means creating efficient systems. I mean, that's what a business is, right? You, you either make money one of two ways. 
you sell a product or you sell a service. And the business itself is a system of systems. And the faster you realize that, the more efficient you'll be and the more money you'll make. So that's why we're creating these workflow systems for you on editing your photos. It's really important on how you do it. Now, he did ask a question, Rob, on how often should I be doing this? Should I be doing this for every client or should I be mm -hmm. doing this for my high-end clients? This is a great way to add an upsell. You can essentially just call it an HDR image. You can go out to real estate uh, and take basic images, one little JPEG, boom, you're done. But if you want if you want to have super high quality images, you could sell the HDR quote unquote effect. Now, Vic has a whole class on um, aerial photography. He talks about stacking. Sometimes he he just takes one particular image that has the best exposure, and sometimes he stacks them. It just depends on where the histogram lies. Hmm. So it's real. There's a lot of depth and information to this question. Yeah. But I would say I think it's a great upsell to people. But frankly, myself, because I'm only as good as my last image or my last video, I think it's really important. Even if you are on some of these simpler jobs, and you're out there during um, golden hour. It's always always good to ensure that you have um, you know, stacked images. For example, I'm trying to pull up a particular image. Well, as I look at the difference between the stacked and the non-stacked, it's a big difference. It's a it, huge difference. Which leads difference. me to, I would be cautious about not doing it. Because well, the, yeah, because you could hurt your, your credibility, I mean. Right, I mean, the quality, and obviously these are just two examples. But the quality was significantly less. And, and when I say quality, I mean just the way it looks to the eye. Yeah, totally. Well, it also looks more natural to the eye. Actually, here's a good example. So see how dark here we have. Mm -hmm. This is the San Francisco Creek Ranch. Very, very, very dark. But, you know, our exposure in the sky is great, right? So if we go back to the edited version, well, this is the opposite side. But do you see how we have all this detail in the grass now? All the detail. Which is what in the you trees. mean by data. You can just do so much more with mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I actually had this printed out for a client and sent it as a gift because I love sending gifts to clients. <laughs> it's a great idea. Send me work. But sometimes <laughs> I don't need the work. <laughs> That's the biggest problem right now. <gasps> so it's what to say no to. But um, anyway, I will send you the images and okay. maybe we can have Kirill put them in the show. Yeah. That way, if you're watching the video version, you can actually see um, these images uh, that were taken for Marriott, actually, and give you a good example of why you would want to shoot bracketed images. I think it really, really helps tell the story. Yeah. So one last point is um, he asked about charging more. I would think that there... Well, you said upsell, so I guess that answers the question. Yeah, and yeah. you could, but also if you're advertising for yourself and you have a client who did not pay a lot of money and you're just taking simple JPEGs, but it's a beautiful home, uh, you're out there during sunset, I would still take a bracketed image. doesn't mean you have to give it to the client, but what it does mean is that you'll have that image for yourself. Sure. So I think it's really important. Huh. But, wow, that was a quick little education that was woo! useful. I, I learned am, something. I am pooped. I bet. Yeah. Um, so guys, just a heads up, we are headed to CES. We are going to have a show on what we have found at CES, some of the trends that we've seen, uh, and what may be important to you. So stay tuned tomorrow for that show. I think it'll be a good one. Um, and yeah, if you guys have a question, just go to askdroneu.com. And if you're ready to take advantage of the cheapest drone education with the most value, then just head over to droneu.education and take a look at the offerings there and get exclusive access to the DroneU community where you can get personalized questions answered immediately. It's really good. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Hey.